latest Ridgecrest, 13,300 earthquakes. And Long Valley Caldera, over 1,000 earthquakes in 28 days. And there's a strange cutoff at Coso at Ridgecrest that I'd like you to see. Let's take a look together. Here we are at Coso Volcanic Monitoring. I'll leave a link below for you for this. This is the Coso Volcanic Field, as we can see. This is Ridgecrest under here. And we can see that for the past 28 days, we've had over 13,100 here in this screen. Of course, we have a lot more coming in this way. And in, into Nevada, this is, I think this was 3 point, yeah, 3.3 couple of days ago. That's pretty big. And we, the red ones are the past hour. 2.6 just in this way. Okay, very shallow 2.6 and um, 6.1, 2 magnitude there. This is the strange cutoff I wanted you to see. Right there. These hundreds and thousands of quakes that have taken place don't want to come over this line. This is a fracture zone. This is the area of the garlic fault, as we can see, right there. Let's pull out a little bit so you can see it more clearly. This is the San Andreas right here. This is the longest fault line in California, the San Andreas Fault, and the second longest is the garlic, the garland, uh, the garlic, sorry, fault line right here, and here we have Ridgecrest. And let's put it again, you'll see that they stop right there. It makes a little bit of a jagged pathway, but that's where they stop. Let's go in more again. And it'll just uh, load them. It takes forever because there are so many. And you can see that they never pass this line. There's a few straggling over here. Very few in this area. And I'm just wondering why. I can't seem to find any reason why. Because all of this is volcanic area. Yet it stops right there. Right there. Should be plotting some more. There you go. Okay, that's in Nevada. It's uh, also strangled into Nevada. And uh, that's what I wanted to show you here. A tremendous amount of activity. Of course, it's decreased since the July 4th and 5th, magnitude 6.4 and magnitude 7.1. But they're still ongoing. This is a volcanic field, as we know. And this is the Walker Lane Fault System. Stopping right there at the Garlic Fault. The Walker Lane Fault System takes about 25% of the subduction pressure that is put into the uh, area. 25% of the pressure is taken by the Walker Lane Fault System. And 75% uh, is taken by San Andreas. This is the Long Valley Caldera area, and let's get into that now. And you'll see that that has its own set of earthquakes, and they'll be plotted again. Let's see. Pull in more. Okay, over a thousand, as you can see. And um, they do have a lot of seismometers, of course, because it's a super volcano. This one was about, uh, yeah, this was just a few hours ago, 3 magnitude, 3.2 depth. Again, they're just plotted over each other. There are so many, you can't possibly see them. Some of them are just over the same exact situated location. And this one here is another swarm here. This one here is another swarm here. And um, a couple of days ago, we had a swarm of 110. A couple of days before that, we had a swarm of 220 in one day. So we have, or having swarms there as well. And of course, Long Valley Caldera is a super volcano. Here we are, Google Earth. Let's fix up our north a little bit. Okay, 
Long Valley Caldera, and Ridgecrest, and this, as you can see very well, the formation of the cut by the San Andreas Fault, the Garlic Fault, and the Walker Lane Fault System, which is able to give a mega thrust earthquake and has a lot of high uh, threat volcanoes sitting on it. It pushes onto the Cascadia Arc this way. You can see how big it is. It's not one fault, it's a series of faults acting like one fault and going into the Juan de Fuca Plate. And it pushes into the Cascadia Arc. It pushes in. That's why perhaps when we had the 6.2 earthquake July 3rd off Vancouver, Canada, right here in Bella Bella, Canada, it gave us 13 hours later the Ridgecrest earthquake July 4th in the morning of 6.4 magnitude. But that's not the first time it happened. It happened in 2015 when we had another 6.2. Again, in the same situation right here, in the same location, north of Vancouver Island, 6.2 in 2015, and it gave an earthquake to Ridgecrest, moderate, 5.3.5, uh, uh, 24 hours later. So, 2015 was 24 hours later, in uh, 2019, it was 13 hours later. And that kicked off the bigger quake in Ridgecrest of 7.1. And now we have the swarms going on here, which have also, of course, have dislodged and uh, affected Long Valley Caldera, which is a supervolcano. And Long Valley is only about 157 miles from Ridgecrest, 160 miles from Ridgecrest. Okay? It's not that far. Now, thank goodness we had this quake here at a distance from Los Angeles because Los Angeles, as we know, is a very populated city, over three and a half million people. And uh, many engineers believe that the buildings are not able to withstand such a large earthquake. They would not be safe and secure for the people that they house. Uh, so, thank goodness it was out in Ridgecrest. We did not have any victims from that earthquake, thank goodness. But uh, I just wanted you to know to see the activity is still going on. Here we are at Volcano Discovery at the USA Volcanoes. And we're going to California. You see how many volcanoes California has. And boy, in alphabetical order. Brushy Butte, Clear Lake, Coso, volcanic field, of course, Eagle Lake, Golden Trout Creek, Inyo Craters, which are around, of course, uh, Long Valley, Lassen, Lampic Lake, Long Valley Caldera, Mammoth Mountain, Medicine Lake, Mono Craters, Mono Lake. Um, all these are, of course, near, uh, and the Inyo, did we say Inyo? Yes, we did, okay. They're near the Long Valley Caldera, Mono Lake, Mount Shasta, Salt and Buttes, of course, uh, south of Ridgecrest, Silver Lake, Tumble Buttes, Twin Buttes, UBB Craters are uh, around uh, north of uh, Ridgecrest. So let's take Long Valley. Okay, here we are. That's the map location of it. Large 17 by 32 kilometer Long Valley Caldera, east of the central Sierra Nevada range in California, is a result of a giant explosive eruption that happened about 760,000 years ago and formed the widespread and voluminous Bishop Tuff. The caldera has been showing unrest in recent years in the form of deformation of the caldera floor and earthquake swarms. And you have to realize this was written way before the Ridgecrest earthquakes. It contains numerous hot springs and fumaroles. In order to better study and monitor the caldera and possible further changes, USGS established the Long Valley Observatory. Following Bishop Tuff eruption and the formation of Long Valley caldera 760,000 years ago, activity continued in the central part of the caldera to form a lava dome. Smaller explosive eruptions of rhyodacite, pumice, pumice rock occurred 
as well uh, from uh, outer ring fracture vents. The last activity was about 50,000 years ago. In its early history, the caldera contained a large lake where the new lava dome formed an island. Beach deposits can be seen on the caldera walls today. Later, the lake drained through the Owens River Gorge. The younger Inyo craters developed the caldera on the northwest, but are chemically and tectonically distinct from the Long Valley magmatic system. Some pictures. Long-term trends. Earthquake activity remained low. Well, not anymore. It's very high. Average just 5 to 10 earthquakes per day. Well, not, that's not so anyway. A deformation trend. Renewed uplift of the resurgent dome that began in early 2002, ended in early 2003, largely offsetting the 2 centimeters of subsidence that accumulated from early 1999 through the end of 2001. The resurgent dome has since shown minor fluctuations in uplift and subsidence, but remains roughly 80 centimeters higher than in the late 1970s. Carbon dioxide trend, the diffuse carbon dioxide gas flux in the Horseshoe Lake tree kill area has seen little change from the relatively high levels of 50 and 150 tons per day, per day, sustained for the past several years. So you can see how much carbon dioxide the volcanoes give out. And earthquakes, of course, earthquakes also give out carbon dioxide. So this is on volcano discovery. And, um, okay, here is the map of Mono Lake. And Inyos are down here. And the caldera area is right here. Resurgent dome right here. I'll leave links below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.